even though we've done several lectures already, um, this is kind of the first time we're going to talk about dynamics. Um, but we've done all the setup work, and uh, now we can get on to actually doing calculations of dynamics. Um, and these, uh, this subject matter is going to deal with particle kinematics. in non-rotating coordinate systems. Um, as long as your coordinate system is non-rotating, uh, your velocity vector is the time derivative of the position vector. You can write it with that dot notation. And your acceleration vector is the derivative of the velocity vector. Um, you can write it as v dot, and it's also equal to p double dot. Um, and so you can go back and forth between position, velocity, and acceleration. What you need to notice is um, if you're going in the direction of position, like you know the position and you're trying to use that to solve for the velocity, or you know the velocity and you're trying to use that to solve for acceleration, or you know the position and you're trying to find the acceleration, then you know you have everything you need because all you're doing is differentiating. Um, and differentiating doesn't bring in any constants. Um, so here you're just differentiating. This is the easier way to go, the easier direction to go. Um, if you're going the other direction, if you're given acceleration and trying to find velocity or position, or you're given velocity and you're trying to find position, then that's when this becomes an ordinary differential equation. You have to use separation of variables. Um, and this is the direction where you're going to need boundary conditions because you're going to need to find, you're going to need to figure out values for those constants of integration. Um, and one thing that we're going to use pretty often in, um, in this is if the coordinate system origin is not accelerating, Um, then the acceleration vector, uh, if the coordinate origin is not accelerating, then an object that's in free fall which means um, the only force acting on the object is gravity Um, then the acceleration vector is 9.81 meters per second squared acting down towards the center of the Earth. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to just um, give a couple of example problems. The first one is a free fall problem, sort of a general calculation involving free fall. So first, given that g is this value that I just mentioned, 9.81 meters per second squared, um, we are going to derive the um, vertical free fall equations. Uh, and the two that we want are that position as a function of time is equal to p sub 0 plus v sub 0 t minus 1 half g t squared. And the second equation is that the velocity as a function of time is equal to v sub 0 minus g t. Okay, 
So how are we going to derive these? Well, the first thing we're going to do is um, we're dealing with free fall. And so we know that uh, vertically, and we're only dealing with the up and down component here, uh, the y component where y is pointing up away from the center of the earth. We know that the acceleration is equal to negative g because it's acting down. And we know that we're going to define um, when time is equal to zero, we're going to call that value of the position p sub zero. And when time is equal to zero, we're going to call that velocity v sub zero. Um, and we know that the acceleration is equal to v dot, which is equal to p double dot. And so our differential equation that we're going to start with says p double dot is equal to negative g where p of 0 is equal to p sub 0 and p dot of 0 is equal to v sub 0. Okay, that's our starting point. It's a differential equation, so uh, mentally you need to go through those three steps. So first, what's the independent variable? There's only one. We're taking derivatives with respect to time. Uh, so this has one independent variable time, and it's an ordinary differential equation. The dependent variables, there's only one. We're trying to find p as a function of time. And then when we find that, we'll differentiate it to give us velocity as a function of time. And then uh, the last thing we need to do is figure out if we have the boundary conditions we need. We have a single second-order differential equation, so we need two boundary conditions. And we have one boundary condition for the position and one for the derivative of the position, so this will work. So we can solve this. All right, so the steps for solving this, we're going to think of this as the derivative of p dot with respect to time. That's equal to negative g separate variables and integrate, and you get that the integral of dp dot is equal to the integral of negative g dt. Integrate both sides and um, lump the constants of integration together, and you get that p dot is equal to negative g t, this g is just a constant, uh, plus c1. And now we're going to do the same thing again to go from p dot to p. So we have dp is equal to negative gt plus c1 dt. And we'll integrate both sides. And that gives us, after we lump the constants together again, p is equal to negative one-half gt squared plus c1t plus c2. So you can see this is already taking the form that we want. Uh, it already looks uh, sort of like the equation we want. We just have to solve for these constants. So now the boundary conditions. The first boundary condition says that... Um, p sub 0 is the value of p, is equal to negative 1 half times g times 0 squared plus c1 times 0 plus c2. And that says that c2 is equal to p sub 0. So now we'll update our expression for p, and we have that p as a function of time is equal to, I'm going to rearrange things, but it's still this same equation. Um, so we have p sub 0 plus c1t 
minus one half g p squared. And now we'll go to the second boundary condition. Um, and for this one, we know something about the derivative. Where is it? We know the derivative of p with respect to time. When time is equal to 0, is v sub 0. So take the derivative, and we have, of this updated expression, we have p dot as a function of time is equal to p sub 0 is a constant, so the derivative of that is 0. Then we have c1 minus g t. Um, when t is equal to 0, our boundary condition says that p dot is v0. So we have c1 minus 0. So c1 is equal to v0. Now update our expression. And we have our function for p. Uh, the position function is equal to p sub 0 plus v sub 0 t minus 1 half g p squared. And now that we have this, we can just take the derivative with respect to time, and we get that velocity, which is, remember, just equal to p dot, is equal to v sub 0 minus g t. And so there we've used the differential equation relating acceleration to position and the fact that we know the acceleration in free fall to derive these free fall equations that you know you're probably pretty familiar with. Um, the next example I want to do um, is an example where I'm going to use the chain rule to take the derivative with respect to time without ever knowing um, the function of time. Okay, so here's the question. Uh, say that you have a velocity vector that's given as a function of x, not as a function of time. I mean, it does vary in time, but say we don't know what it's doing second to second. We just know what it's doing position to position. And say that this velocity vector is x squared in the x component, x cubed in the y component. And uh, the meaning of this, just to be clear about it, is the position function is equal to x, y. Or, you know, x and y are the position components. Um, and we want to know what's the acceleration vector when x is equal to 2. OK, well, this would be easy if we um, were given the velocity as a function of time. Then we just take the time derivative of the velocity. But we don't know it as a function of time. And taking the derivative with respect to x doesn't give you the doesn't give you the acceleration. So the way we're going to do this is we know that the acceleration vector is equal to the derivative of the velocity vector. And we know that from the chain rule, dv dx times dx dt is equal to um, dv dt. We can rewrite this as um, the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to x times the x component of the velocity. 
Okay, so take the derivative with respect of velocity with respect to x, and you get 2x, 3x squared, and the x component of the velocity is x squared, right? That's given up here in the definition of the velocity. And so you get a value of 2x cubed, 3x to the fourth. And now you're asked to evaluate that when x is equal to 2. So the acceleration when x equals 2 is equal to just plug 2 in for x, and you get 16, 48. If this was all in SI units, then this is meters per second squared, both of these. So remember that if you ever get to a point where, um, where you'd like to um, take the time derivative of the velocity to get the acceleration, but you don't have the velocity as a function of time, instead you have it as a function of position, see if you can use this chain rule idea uh, to, to express the time derivative.